In this session, we'll discuss the oligo packets, that is a package for pre-processing and handling Affymetrics and Nimblegen uh, microarrays, specifically gene expression microarrays and SNP microarrays. So, Affymetrics chips are uh, so-called single-color microarrays. They are widely used, and uh, an early success of the Bioconductor project was to provide a uh, very uh, good methods for pre-processing and, and analyzing gene expression arrays from Affymetrix. Um, this package is a continuation or a, or, or a second version of an earlier package in, in Bioconductor called the Affy package. The Affy package was specifically focused on gene expression microarrays from Affymetrix, and then later on the authors realized that they could handle gene expression and SNP chips and also from both Affymetrix and Nimblegen. Nimblegen is another company that makes uh, microarrays that were later purchased by Affymetrix. And um, shall we say, for some applications uh, in some areas of genomics, they have been, these arrays have been used a lot, but they are not very commonly used. Let's start off by loading uh, the oligo packets. And we're also going to load the Geo query packets because we're going to uh, get some data from Geo uh, in order to normalize it. So we're going to look at a uh, specific Geo ID, uh, and we want to get so-called cell files. So for Affymetrix microarrays, raw data is stored in a binary format, typically binary format called cell. Um, these are not uh, the standard files you get from Geo. These are always submitted as supplementary files from GU. So the way we uh, get these cell files is we know what the uh, accession number of the experiment is, and then we get the supplementary files. So let's uh, run this one here. And it's gonna take a little while because uh, there's a fair amount of data. In the meantime, I can talk a little bit about Affymetrix uh, expression arrays, or Affymetrix arrays in general. Affymetrix as a company has a technology where they can make a cheap, uh, very high quality, very short oligos. So on an Affymetrix array, the probes in the array are typically on the order of 25 bases long. That's not very long, and it means that the arrays are not, uh, the probes are not very specific. To compensate that on most Affymetrix arrays, if you are missing one specific RNA species or you are missing a SNP, you do this using multiple probes that all measure the same target. These multiple probes are grouped into something called probe set. A probe set is a group of probes that all measure the same target. Uh, for technical reasons, it's quite expensive to design an Affymetrix chip, but then once it's designed, it's cheap to mass produce. So Affymetrix tend to have a few designs that they keep along for around for a long time and not do very many custom designs. Now, uh, let's return to the supplementary file that we have downloaded. Uh, we can see that it's downloaded the file list and then this tar archive that's a little bit like a zip archive. This is where the cell files are gonna be. So I'm gonna uh, expand the file. Uh, I'm gonna create a directory inside this uh, GSE uh, uh, directory that the files already are in uh, called cell and let's see if we look inside that we have a, a list of a list of uh, files we can see that the file names are actually very informative they have uh, some GU sample IDs and then they have underscore what we're actually interested in which is the um, uh, variable of interest so this experiment was uh, comparing uh, samples from some control patients to patients with uh, sleep apnea. The, uh, so we can see we have the control samples, uh, uh, one to eight, and then we have the treatment samples that are labeled as OSA from one to 10. Okay, so uh, we uh, obtain a list of our, of our cell files with the full name. Um, so all we have here is just a list of these file names here uh, with uh, the full path to it. And then, uh, as we often have in Bioconductor, uh, we have convenience functions that read this data into a data container. 
let's execute this. And so what I mean by this is that there's actually other functions that reads each file separately. These uh, low level parsing functions typically return very raw types of data. And then inside specific application areas, uh, data containers have been developed that hold these things. So let's see what our raw data is. Okay, it prints like something that looks very much like an expression set, but it's really something called a gene feature set. We can see that it has a ton of different features or different probes, more than one million probes. Uh, we can see that the name of the array is called hugene.1.0.sg. So this stands for human gene version one. This is a new type of, a relatively new type of Affymetrix microarrays that are different from quote, classic Affymetrix microarrays. For the biologist, I can say that these are gene expression microarrays that's based on random priming uh, instead of oligo-DT priming. Uh, and uh, and uh, they have a lot of features uh, for each gene. The features, the probe that you are using to measure an RNA transcript are spaced along the entire length of the transcript. So let's look a little bit at this gene class uh, uh, set here, at uh, this gene class, uh, this uh, gene feature set here. Uh, we can see that there's some, some stuff here that looks very much like an expression set on ESET. Uh, then we have some additional thing like manufacture intensity file uh, that's new. Um, and uh, this here is really a way of representing uh, these uh, links. As I said before, we have many probes that measure a single gene. Uh, and all of this is sort of taken care of in this in this uh, feature set. So let's look a little bit at the raw data. We access that using the expression uh, uh, access, and that's not a given, but that's true in this case here. And we can see that we get integers that are pretty large, in this case here, between roughly 200 and 10,000. And that indicates that this expression data is um, raw intensity uh, measurements from the scanner. So a microarray scanner has is typically a 16-bit scanner, which means when you scan a probe, you get a number between 0 and 2 to the 16th, which is uh, 65,536. We can confirm that by looking at the highest value inside the expression data. That's exactly what I want. There's actually a probe that basically matches out. So this is not a very, or research have shown that this is not a very good scale to work on with microarray data. Usually we want, we want to let log transform these data here. When we log transform them, if we use the log with base two, we get a number basically between zero and 16. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to clean up uh, the uh, Fino data a little bit, just uh, for good order's sake. So. We get the file name uh, from the from the raw data, which is uh, uh, the file names, and that's kind of the information we have. You can see we, we discussed this here earlier, um, and I'm going to store that inside the pdata. Uh, I'm going to say that my sample names, I don't want this .cell.gc, I don't want this GSM identifier, I just want control one, control two, and so on and so forth. That's unique enough for me. So I'm going to do some cleanup here using regular expressions on these sample names here. We can see that after all of this, I get some uh, useful sample names. Um, and I'm going to put them inside, uh, and I'm going to use them as the sample names of the data set. And then finally, I'm going to create a group variable, which is going to tell me the different experimental groups. Um, and let's see what came out of that. Uh, I have a pdata thing here with an index, which is not really that useful. I have a file name and I have the group and then I have the sample names out to the left. So now we have cleaned up the phenotype a little bit and we are ready to do some stuff. Let's start off by looking at uh, the intensities of this raw data here. So this here is uh, an attempt at describing the need for normalization at, of, of gene expression microarray data. So let's do a box plot. and. Uh, uh, we get a, it has a well-defined uh, method, and we get this little box plot here. Each each plot each box is a different sample, and what we are showing here is a summary of the distribution of intensities on each of the arrays. And we can see they're very very different. Uh, 
remember the uh, y-axis in this box here, or, or not remember, the y-axis in this box plot here is on the log scale. Um, so a, a, a difference of one or two is a quite massive difference. And on this plot here, we can see that all the different arrays have different means. Uh, they have different spread. And we also see that it looks like there's three samples that are a, a, a little bit different, like the control five to control seven. These three samples seem to have very low intensity measurements compared to the rest of the uh, arrays, and they have very low variability as well. Um, really, so, so one hypothesis is that uh, nothing was really hybridized for these samples here. Really understanding that or assessing that or deciding that really is gonna require a lot more exploratory data analysis uh, for, this particular, for, for, for this particular experiment. Now, when you have a data set like this, most often you want to uh, start off by normalizing it. And a very popular method for gene expression microarrays from Affymetrix is the RMA method uh, that I highly recommend people to use. You, it kind of basically always does pretty well. Sometimes there's a method on a specific data set where it can be, that can outperform it a little bit, but RMA always does well. So it's like my method of choice. So I just, so how do I run that? I just run RMA on the, uh, on, on the data. Really simple, takes a little while. It's basically because these arrays are quite massive. They have a million probes on them. This is like some of the bigger, bigger microarrays that have been built. Uh, and uh, RMA consists of like basically three steps, as we can see here, background correction, quantile normalization, and then it takes all the different probes that measure the same gene and output a single number for that. So let's look at norm data. So now we're back in something we know and love, it's the expression set, and we see we've gone from 1 million features to 33,000 features. That's a quite massive reduction, and this is happening because all the probes that measure the same thing has been summarized into a single number at the gene level. We can have a little look at the feature names. Of the uh, expression set. So these are Affymetrix identifiers. Affymetrix identifiers used to have something with underscores in, but for the new arrays, it's basically a single uh, a number. Don't think of this as integers. These are like numbers that tells you something about what was missed in this particular process. So in order to annotate it, we have to go from these numbers into gene names, as we have learned to do in other sessions. Let's look at the uh, normalized data. We can do a box plot again. And now everything looks a lot nicer, right? We have the same spread, the same mean, roughly the same spread, roughly the same mean, and it's ready for analysis. There's a, a couple of notes here. The first note is that these box plots or these distributions are not exactly the same. And that's because uh, we run quantile normalization, which is a method for normalizing uh, data uh, on the pro at the probe level, and then later on we summarize from the probe level into the gene level. If we had run quantile normalization on the gene level expression, on the gene level expression measurements, these distributions would have been identical. The second thing to note is that we have uh, we have uh, we have we now have uh, log transform values, or we had that before in the box plot, but we can confirm that we do have. Uh, log transform, the log two is always log two in microarrays uh, uh, measurements. And uh, and it does look like uh, the samples control five to control seven are not that different from the rest of the arrays. So now we have run AME, you see how easy it is. And uh, um, this is like a core thing we can do with, with Olico. There are similar easy ways of dealing with SNP arrays.